Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to my uh, webinar this afternoon with uh, me, Rich Perry, Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. Um, with uh, We're going to talk about trading with trend lines today. Um, I believe trading with trend lines is probably the most important aspect of technical analysis we could talk about. So uh, I think it's a really interesting topic and uh, one that I'm hoping that uh, you take very seriously because um, I think in terms of all the technical indicators out there, I think trading, uh, so I think trend lines are um, probably the most fundamental um, aspect of technical analysis you can really go for. So um, I'm hoping that you take quite a lot out of this webinar today. Anyway, um, starting off with my uh, my disclaimer, my risk warning, um, because I'm going to be talking about live market information today. So please um, just read this dis disclaimer quickly. I will show you again at the end. Um, but uh, that's um, necessary for live market information. So there it goes. Right. Um, again, just uh, very quickly about me. Um, not too much, but I've been in the market for 14 years, so um, I'm well qualified. I hope to talk about um, technicals today. Um, got technical analysis diploma from the STA, and um, yeah, I've been uh, in, the, in the city for 14 years doing Forex, um, equities, and uh, gold as well. And uh, yes, um, so I'm hoping that that allows you to believe that I know what I'm talking about <laughs> to a certain extent. Anyway, right. Um, what am I going to talk about today? Um, as I said, trendline theory. There's a little bit of Dow theory involved in technical analysis and um, I, uh, I'm then going to go on to just a, a look at the time frames, the different time frames you can use technical analysis over short, medium and long term. And then a few um, few trend lines on the current Forex majors, some of the indices and gold. And then live market analysis. I'm going to look at exactly what's going on. Uh, a lot of these Forex pairs are on significant key support levels and um, could be on the brink of uh, another dollar bull run, but I will show you uh, that in a bit and um, we can talk through that. Any questions you've got throughout the webinar, uh, I will try to field them as they come up, but um, if I do miss them, then please let me uh, just uh, try and get back to them at the end. Um, I don't anticipate the uh, the webinar being too long in terms of the, the theory side of it, so we can get hopefully quite into a lot of meat for the uh, live market analysis, but uh, we shall see. Right. Let's kick off now. OK, trend lines. Um, I believe trend lines are one of the most important concepts of technical analysis. Um, just basically a trend line is a simple charting technique where a line is drawn uh, to represent the trend on the price. Now, these lines are used to show where the trend is, as well as um, identification of trend reversals. So when a trend line gets broken, that would suggest there's a possibility of a trend reversal going on now. Unfortunately, identifying trend lines, I think, is um, a pretty much um, a well. It's, a lot of analysts that I can see on on Twitter and, and the internet, whatever, are fairly lazy with their trend lines. Um, they just basically just randomly, it seems, to uh, put a trend line on a chart and think that that is exactly where the trend line is. Well, I'm I like to be a little bit more accurate with that. I like to um, make sure that um, some of the key lows and the key highs are linked. Uh, through these trend lines, and I think that, but, but in doing so, that gives it a lot more credence to the analysis, um, which I think can sometimes be a little bit subjective, and uh, I think it is to the detriment of the analysis as well. So I think it's important that you get that right. Um, the trend lines are basically a, a series of. Um, in an uptrend, it's a series of higher highs and higher lows, uh, as you can see on the right-hand side here, uh, and it links through the uh, through the line at the bottom and in the opposite way a downtrend is a series of lower lows and lower highs uh, linked by this line at the top that goes slopes to the downside um right well i'm going to start off sort of by a bit of a sort of a, um, a well-known political soundbite uh, which is um when you begin your analysis your three main priorities uh should be trend, trend, trend. I cannot stress that highly enough because um, deciphering the direction of the market you're in is vital to uh, understanding um, how you analyze other indicators um, such as momentum. Uh, they are, it is incredibly important to know exactly what sort of market you're trading in. And to do that, you basically need to draw your trend lines in. Um, 
The concept of trend is uh, one of the basic and original tenets of Dow theory, uh, Dow theory being um, sort of the founding um, concept of technical analysis, pretty much. And um, it's, uh, it suggests that everything is in the price. So therefore, it's all about price movement. And there, so therefore, there's a need to distinguish the price, the overall trend in the price. And therefore, if you know where the market is going, um, then you should be trading with that market. So um, knowing whether it's a bull trend, a bear trend, or even a sideways trend is incredibly important and crucial to how you read your technical indicators subsequently to that. Um, for example, being able to um, successfully decipher all my momentum indicators, RSI, stochastics, MACD lines, my favorite uh, three, that is, um, is absolutely crucial to get the trend right. Um, the trend is your friend is a, a very popular, um, it's a very popular phrase in technical analysis and it is popular for a uh, well for a very good reason and that's because it is true prices do move in trends and probably one of the most important pieces of advice that i can give to you across all my webinars that i've uh, that i've um, given is that on technical analysis is that knowing the trend is crucial to your price um to price movement and therefore to your success in trading um i can i would strongly urge you to trade in the direction of the trend um, as prices do move in trends and it makes it incredibly difficult for yourself to consistently trade against the trend so um, so that is the main crux of trend analysis and basically um, what I'm trying to put across is the, my main point in technical analysis is that if you trade in the direction of the trend then you will be far more successful on a consistent basis than if you don't um, you may well catch a few winners in uh, in the near term, but I think in the long term um, and the long run, you will lose more trades than you win because trading counter trend, I believe, is is incredibly risky, um, and in my opinion, is one of the quickest ways to lose money when trading forex. Sorry, uh, am I just um, sorry? I'm just reading a few comments. Is, are there sound problems? Uh, Mm. No, I don't. I don't think there. No audio. Okay, fine. Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, no, I just had a couple of messages saying that uh, they didn't know whether the sound was okay. Okay, fine. Right. Um, yeah. So it's basically, just trade in the direction of the trend uh, is incredibly important. Um, now, the reason is because there is a there is a very key reason behind why bear market rallies tend to undershoot their recovery targets and why bull market corrections will find buyers returning to support prices before the downside target has been met. And that is because, because the market knows that the trend is your friend and, and the, the traders get uh, a little bit too, um, too over optimistic, so too uh, keen to get back in to the, to the, to the, to support the trend, and subsequently you find that the t the um, the price is either supported or finds resistance at um, a, a sooner target than you think when you're trading against the trend. So it is, um, I, I think that's important to point to make as well. Um, okay, so why don't we just go sort of into a few. <sighs> Aspects of technicals. Okay, we'll start off with S and P. Now, look at that. That is the S and P 500 over the course of the last three years, since since uh, since mid to late 2011, the S and P 500 has been in a massive secular bull market, and you could even call that a big uptrend channel on the S&P 500. It's an incredibly strong bull run on that. But you could also argue that within that, there are sequences of what we've got at the moment, which is a sideways trend, which is n no real direction. And that is pretty much your secondary trend or medium term trend sort of lasting um, a couple of months or so. S&P 500 has basically gone nowhere, like traded up and down, up and down, nowhere in those in that uh, in that time. And within that, also, if you zoom in a little bit more, you've got this sequence of a, a one to two week downtrend, which is then subsequently broken. Um, so there are there are basically short, medium, and long term trends within um, within all charts. 
and you need to decipher exactly where you're trading within that um, macro trend. I think you do a top-down analysis personally. I think you decipher the big macro trend and then you do you go inside that. So you, you, you realize that the S&P 500 is in this massive bull market, still is. But in the last two months or so, in the last six weeks to two months, it's basically going sideways and it keeps doing, keeps hitting its head and sort of not really being able to go anywhere. There's no real trend going on in the, in the course of the past two or three months on the S&P 500. But within that, then you've got this sequence of sort of uptrends and downtrends where the S&P 500 sort of rallies for a, a week or so and then falls away for a week or so. And that, in, that, in this period here, for example, falling away forms a nice downtrend, but that downtrend gets broken. And then subsequently, you're back within this whole, um, this whole sequence of sideway trading. But the, what I would say is this is still suggesting that ultimately the S&P 500 will be continuing to move higher because it's in this massive bull market. It can still, it, I could still see the S&P 500 correcting back to 1920. So from, from 2046 down to 1920, that's 120 pips, 120 points, which is about five, six percent, six percent. You could still have that correction within this big bull market and still get away with it and still consider um, the S&P 500 to be in a bull market. So that is important thing to uh, to stress. Now, the other important thing to stress is that equity markets and I think Forex markets sort of have different aspects of um, short, medium, long term. I think across um, across equity markets, you can say probably between one and two years is where your bull market is. So is where your long-term trend is maybe six months for a medium-term trend um so it may, well maybe between three and six months and then a short-term trend maybe a month but in in uh, forex markets there is a difference which i'll show you now i think that um what you're seeing in forex markets is trends because forex markets are zero-sum gain you don't really see massive secular uh massive secular bull markets or bear markets you see sort of sequences of annoyingly the chart's not responding you see a sequence of maybe six months or so in the in the big runs before um before maybe being retraced and uh, it's uh, it is fairly evident that i think in uh, in this current sequence oh good lord in this current sequence of the euro that we've we're in this n another sequence of big trend to the downside we had this big uh, throughout 2011 to 2012 we had this big bear market that was then reversed you could even argue could even argue that there was a, a bull market there in fact it probably is um, and then that was and that was subsequently broken and we're now seeing this the reverse of that we're now seeing the reverse of that. So we're seeing that the euro is in this big sell-off bear market. But within that, you've actually accelerated this downtrend at the moment. And I'll zoom in slightly here to show you we've accelerated away from that downtrend. And uh, we've now broken that downtrend, which is interesting. Um, and I think what we need to... Uh, what we need to sort of see is that we're still in this big bear phase because we've still got this big downtrend here. And that downtrend doesn't, doesn't actually come in into 1, 120, 1, 122 area at the moment. And um, that is important to know. OK, right. A question. When do we know that the trend has changed? Good question. I'll tell you why. OK. It's because you you look for key highs and key lows. Now see this see this euro see this euro bull run from Q3 2012 up to 2014. You've seen this. You've seen a sequence of key higher lows that come in. First one was here. That never got broken, and then you had this this uh, key reaction high that subsequently was broken to the upside. And then you see the sequence of higher lows. Now, as soon as you start to see these sequence of higher lows broken, you start to think there's a, a possible trend reversal. You've also got a top pattern here, which actually forms head and shoulders top. But that's sort of uh, looking at pattern analysis. But still, you've seen this key reaction low at 3480, which breaks down. You also see this trend line being broken. 
and you start to see lower highs forming. So instead of seeing a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, you're seeing that sequence subsequently broken. And that is where I think around here and obviously with, I mean, I, I was talking about this big head and shoulders top when it came around and it was a very significant moment when that broke down because it, it broke sh quite sharply down. And then you subsequently saw another lower high broken, sorry, higher low broken, which was this, uh, this one here back from Q4 2013. And on the breakdown of that, that is, I think, the confirmation of that back big trend line break that big um trend line which lasted from q3 2012 to, to 2014 you actually had two years worth of that bull run but you saw that um you saw that trend line broken and subsequently there was a reversal of that trend and we're now currently in this big bear phase okay so how do you plot trend lines is the question now as i said um you look for your key highs and your key lows um and you look in a in a bull uptrend, you're looking for connecting your key lows. And uh, across this one, if I roll back, you can see this this one here. You actually almost got a pretty good downtrend channel, actually. So if I leave that trend line there and draw in that one again, rehash that slightly. You've actually got a pretty good downtrend channel there. So you're looking to link your key highs and uh, in a in a downtrend. And you, if you if you even can make a downtrend channel, uh, you're looking for key lows to be linked as well. But just to bear in mind that you can you can do it in a different way. You can either use closing prices, which sort of takes out the noise of um, your high low spikes. Or you can use your your absolute highs and absolute lows for your trend lines, but uh, make sure you're um, fairly consistent in it, um, and uh, it's very interesting to see. Okay, uh, let's show you cable because there's another one that I wanted to show you on cable. Interesting, right? Okay, see this one. This one was cable Q3 2013. You actually saw these the trend line broken here, and this is sort of takes me back to that um discussion we just had really about um how you decipher trends and uh, and um when we build trends you're looking for breakouts you're looking for higher highs and higher lows now you had this trend line forming through q3 2013 zoom in slightly there so you see a bit better but it was broken however subsequently you saw the support coming in and subsequently you broke out and look at this breakout because this move that you saw, actually I'll do it with horizontal. You saw this resistance broken at 63 figure. And subsequently that resistance was broken. Now anyone who sort of um, who kept, was uh, on my support resistance uh, webinar last month will know that that is a, a significant move because you've, you've broken up to a new high. So you're starting to build a new trend, but also you see these consistent moves back towards the breakout levels to find support and then go again so you you know throughout this period here that you're beginning to build a new trend so you start to move higher and you move higher consistently across the course of the next uh what's that tw uh, it's eight to twelve months but then you start to see this breakdown and the, the breakdown you see on cable again is when you see it move below this key higher low so you've had this this correction, this correction here, you're breaking the trend line already. And then the confirmation of that breakdown comes with this um, breakdown of the key higher low around that 67 big figure mark. And then you start to build this new trend and cable is still in this new trend now. Still in this new trend, just tried to break that tried to break the trend the other day a couple of days ago but but doesn't hasn't actually done it yet and really failed to decisively make the move a couple of intraday moves but nothing decisive no no whole trend no whole trading days outside the trend lines and i think we're still just hanging on to that bare phase so at the moment I'm still wondering whether this is going to turn out into a base pattern because you're still holding above the 52 figure support, but that's uh, sort of a, an aside. But still, 
this downtrend officially hasn't been broken yet, in my opinion, and uh, it needs more work to do. But I'm still hanging on to the to the hope that this turns out into a base pattern. Um, but still, this big downtrend phase hasn't been broken yet. Right. Uh, okay, let's have a look at a couple of these questions. Okay. If we have two downtrend lines, how do we know which one is more important? Are you referring to that Euro chart? Uh, if you're talking about that Euro chart where you've got this big downtrend in place here and then the sharper downtrend, well, you, it's basically exactly how your what your trading outlook is because I would say that 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 the break the break higher from that downtrend is important in the near to medium term, but subsequently. If you start to buy it, you're going to be trading against the big macro trend, which is this big downtrend here. So you need to bear in mind that buying the euro at the moment is trading counter trend. Now, if you're going to do that, it's all about trade management. Um, if you're going to trade counter trend, you need to have your effective stop losses in place. Otherwise, you could get really badly burnt because you're trading against the trend. And subsequently, I think the, the euro is going lower. I personally think it's going to be going back towards correct back to test at least this one dollar one dollar eleven low that we saw um but I'm not necessarily ruling out that in the very near term you could still see a bit of a counter trend move that would be a technical rebound now that technical rebound I think would be sold into however you stood still could get a rebound of maybe a hundred ticks two hundred ticks to the upside back towards this one fifteen area. Now, if you're going to do that, you need to have an adequate stop loss in place so that if it if the move, if the market does move against you and does fall back towards a test of this uh, 111 area from 113, you need to have an adequate stop loss in place. And that's when it all comes down to trade management. OK, so what do I think about euro dollar now? I will talk about that in a bit um, for cable is the new trend below 150 starting to. Uh, starting to the bearish side. Okay, let me just look at that. Um, is ah, uh, are you saying that is that developing into a new uptrend? Well, let's. I mean, it's not. It's not great. I mean, you could argue that is a higher low, and in fact, I think it is potentially all part of this potential base pattern process going on here. So it could still, I, I think, the, I think in, in terms of uh, cable versus the euro or cable versus euro dollar, I'm more confident that uh, cable is going to uh, form a rally or a technical rally than the euro at the moment because of this base pattern in place on cable. But I still think that cable has a lot more to do. Do you think cable will make another move up to 153 and rechallenge the trend line? Yeah, I'm I'm still hopeful. Um and I'll tell you for why because I think cable is holding on to the key um key support which is a pivot level around 152 and again uh, 3 days in a row it's now bounced off uh, 152. Um and I think that that gives me the hope uh, that uh, this could still turn into some sort of a rebound, at which point I think it would be sold into because I think there's a lot going on for sterling this year, which could create a lot of volatility. OK, any recommendation on which time time frame time frames to, to use? Well, yes. OK, this sort of moves nicely on to time frames because you can do monthly, you can do weekly, you can do hourly trend lines and look at this across the monthly uh, euro look at this massive secular bear market on the euro but, uh, between 92 and 2002 you then turn into a massive secular bull market slight correction but again you've got this big bull run in, two th in the late 2000s and now look at all these con consistent sequences of bull markets and then into the back in within this big secular bear market that we've been in since 2008 on the euro and once more you've broken down through loads of key supports and that just reaffirms the fact that the euro is in this massive secular bear market and the reason why so many people are uh, talking about parity maybe on the euro now is that we're in this secular bear market and you've broken 
all these key lows here uh, over the past few years that have been left. Um, and it's maybe slightly extended in the very near term. Look, uh, it's a very strong run to the downside, and you do tend to see, I mean, what was that? That was 160.38 down at 2, sort of 124. So quite a significant sell-off that you had there, um, 3,600 points. So, yeah, I mean, that's not too far away off of one figure. So, yeah, it could well happen, but um, I'm not necessarily ruling out a very near-term technical rebound. Uh, on this monthly chart, if you got one, um, then you'd probably be looking out for these kilos once again, uh, 1875 up towards 20 figure pretty much. So that could that could still happen. But this is in a big bear market. Equally, this is hourly on Japanese yen. Hourly, to, a hourly downtrend broken. Look at this going on here at the moment. On do oh, no. <laughs> in the last few minutes... Interesting, interesting, because I just put out a tweet actually saying that I think that this could turn into a bull flag. And what's going on? It's turning into a bull flag. You've seen this over the course of the past couple of days. You've seen this downtrend channel, which I thought could be turning into a bull flag. And we've seen a break now above 1922. And, okay, well, this is sort of a bit off-piste, but I'm going to do live projection of that okay so the Fibonacci that is a bit of a rough projection but still gives you a target of 100 percent 120 spot 40 so that that is the upside bull market projection of the breakout that we've just seen that flag now next target is 1960 because that's the next Fibonacci level which is 61.8 However, above that, you're looking at 120 spot 40, which is interesting on that. So, yes, it does uh, move across time frames very well, trend line. So the fact that we've broken that downtrend, we started to break that downtrend, meant that the bulls were starting to gain control. And now we've broken out above the resistance of 119.22, which should now open that 100 percent bull flag target of nine, uh, around 120 spot 40. Right. Anything else? Greece ready to kill the euro? <laughs> yeah, well, they're trying. Um, Drog is probably not necessarily that bothered, in my opinion, uh, because the, the eurozone is well set, um, theoretically well set, to cope with uh, a Grexit at the moment. And uh, it would also help to uh, drag the euro lower. So happy days for Mario Draghi in that scenario. OK, a roundup in cable... I don't know, so I love it. Okay. Oh dear, you never got my tweet. Really? I did send it. Okay, ah, never mind. Um, 33 minutes ago, if you're interested. Anyway, um, right, fine. Um, okay, so what are we looking at here now? Okay, so fine, as in, right, I'm just going to quickly go through some of these. Uh, trends that we've got on so we've talked about euro we've talked about cable so that's cable there we've still got that going on we've still got um well we've broken that downtrend on on the yen there's the yen's a difficult one because there's no real trends that you can build on the upside um of any real note because it's it's been sort of trending sideways and it's very um it goes on these massive runs higher but it certainly looks like Dolly Yen is breaking out once more. Okay, AUD. Aussie, look at that on the Aussie. That is a lovely down, big downtrend channel on the Aussie. Still going. So you'd be looking to sell into that downtrend. Any rebound into that downtrend, you're looking to sell strength. Now, if I put my crosshair on there, look at that. Lovely old, old support turned into new resistance at 80 uh, what's that? 8030, I think it is. Uh, 8025. Okay, so that's what you'd be looking at there. And also, we've got a big resistance. It comes at 7850, which is holding back. Uh, if you look on the hourly chart, it looks very good. Holding back um, the Aussie dollar on that regard. So, Kiwi. 
you've actually broken this downtrend um, on Kiwi, and you're consolidating sideways. In fact, Aussie and Kiwi are both really consolidating at the moment. There's no major, um, no major attempt at a re- recovery yet. As I said on the Aussie, uh, you've got that uh, eighty, sorry, seventy-eight fifty level, and on the Kiwi, it seems to be that uh, seventy uh, seventy-four fifty is the resistance on Kiwi. But you have broken that downtrend, which I mean, leads you to suggest it's sort of now consolidating rather than being so bearish. Um, and uh, it's interesting, nonetheless. Okay, so is there one on CAD? Yeah, I tell you for why, because here we go. There was a lovely uptrend channel going on on CAD, and then s- suddenly they, they started talking about um, uh, suddenly they talk, started talking about potential easing, and then the Canadian uh, central bank did do the monetary easing, cut interest rates, and then bang, there was a massive breakout. Now, theoretically, if you break higher from an uptrend channel, you measure the vertical. It's not great, uh, sort of, to show it this way, but still, you measure the vertical distance of the of the range, and then you project it higher. So that would been that would have been your breakout level of the uh, of the trend channel uh, which uh, obviously was more than more than hit um but that was a, a very nice for a while it was a very strong uptrend channel and uh, subsequently breaking higher was was a, a strong bull signal okay let's do gold where are we at and gold interestingly interestingly poised now let's zoom out because you've got these big that big bear market look at that big down massive downtrend channel sorry downtrend on gold since uh, july 2000 was it no october 2013 uh, sorry if i can get my numbers out october 2012 which was broken uh, by this big bull recovery that we saw at the beginning of january now we are currently we hit a high of 13 uh, 1306 i think it was yep and we're now building this new downtrend on gold um and it's interesting because gold has come back towards these supports um well it actually broke that 1255 support which i was a bit upset about but still look at this old floor here around 1240 1238 was this reaction high which uh subsequently is where we're trading at the moment so it that's an interesting level also anyone who does fibonacci um i'll do a quick fibonacci I know this isn't trend lines, but I think it's important. Nonetheless, is it that? Uh, yes. Yeah, here we go. 61.8% of that bull run. I mean, it's it's a bit rough. I'm sorry, uh, I haven't got a snap. I haven't snapped it to point. But if you if you do from the high, uh, from the low to the high, Fibonacci retracement of that is around what 1221, which is again pretty much where this reaction high is here so i'm i'm saying that if it goes below 1222 1221 i think that that is the bears back in control again um but you leave what you do in trend lines is you leave your trend lines on the chart because it is amazing how often the trend lines um become your but once that this is old old resistance here on this downtrend could easily become new support and and that is that does tend to happen on uh, on trend lines so it's it's very interesting um very interesting that that is the case okay so let's just uh let's look at a couple of questions okay fine no nothing else new so um okay it's dax Again, no real trend that you can get off the DAX uh, in recent times because those two lows don't. I suppose you could almost get to that, um, but the, the the key thing is that uh, not to be too arbitrary with your trend lines because it, it sort of detracts from the um, from the uh, how they should be. But you could even argue that that is quite a sharp trend that's been broken. Maybe that intraday low was um, sort of. Uh, a bit of a spike but it's not it's not really great and i don't i'm not a big fan of that but uh it's interesting but look at this in oh, well interesting talking today about the the gap 
um, on my morning report, I talked today about the gap down on the DAX that left this gap at eight, uh, 10,800. We've now filled that gap oh, between within, okay, within five points, but still. If you, if you close back above that gap, it's a bull, um, bull close. But if you if you don't if if you if you fill the gap, which is pretty much has to there or thereabouts, and sort of comes back off again, that is a bear fill, um, and that would suggest that um, that's a, a bearish move. And if you look at the other technical indicators, which I'll show you in a bit on that, in fact, I'll, I'll do it now. You can see that these momentum indicators. Anyone who does momentum will know that it's falling away. RSI, MACD crossover, stochastics confirming this breakdown as well. Um, that these are all bearish signals. Um, so certainly, if that if that closed now, I think below ten thousand eight hundred, that would be a bit of a concern for the DAX. So that is interesting. Okay. Dot FTSE. <laughs> Trend lines on FTSE, not great, actually, and I'll tell you for why, because if you zoom all the way out, you've basically got no trend whatsoever. Nothing, really. Uh, you could argue if you went all the way out, you have sort of broken this big, big bull market run on FTSE, so you're now in sort of a more sideways trading phase, which just continues really what we've seen for the last uh, six months, sorry, for the last few, couple of years really on FTSE, not really just failing every time it gets anywhere near the 6,900 area, it just fails and falls over. And it seems to be once again that that is happening uh, and that is a concern. Um, momentum indicators, if I show you on this, Momentum indicators just rolling over again. Um, slight even bearish divergence on these stochastics as well. So that is a concern um, slightly, I think, on the on the FTSE. Every time FTSE gets towards mid 60s on the RSI, it falls over again. Uh, for 64 again, it's fallen over. Not, we've not lost uh, yet uh, um, the bear, the uh, bull run. And the, 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 you could even argue the fact that you've got all these long tails. Um, that's sort of a mixed signal. I mean, it depends on which way you look at it, really. On the on the candlesticks, you've got these long tails, which would suggest that the, the sellers are there. It's just that they can't really get the initiative going. Um, but, uh, but there's a, a rebound that happens intraday, and sort of the bulls sort of slightly uh, regain control towards the end of the day, um, which I suppose you could, could take two ways. Uh, really sort of um, on that but still the fact that we're trading underneath 6,905 again on FTSE and falling over I think is a bit of a concern so uh, yeah um, okay let's just quickly just do a few tips for your trends um, so my, my point being that I, I think you should do a top-down analysis for your uh, across different time frames, so you start with the, the, your big macro trend, and then you go to go, you keep coming down, um, and so you get sh ever shorter in your time horizons, and then so you basically know exactly how the big macro trends are forming, so you so you effectively don't end up trading considerably against the trend, which is uh, important. Do, try not to be haphazard with your trends; uh, be as accurate, be as accurate as possible. Uh, I think that's important. As I said, don't uh, don't uh, just willy nilly put your trends on your on your charts because, to be honest, it will uh, reduce the um, effectiveness of them. Again, keep your old trend lines on your charts because they do tend to become uh, to, do tend to be used again in the future. Uh, old support becomes new resistance, similar to the whole concept of support and resistance that I spoke about last uh, last time. Uh, and in when you're trading, so we, what you want to be doing is you want to be buying at the uptrend support and selling at your downtrend resistance. Um, it's pretty straightforward stuff, really, but nothing nothing too uh, taxing about that. Um, but still, I think important. 
note nonetheless right okay so let's look at um how live euro is looking this is my chart that i've got currently on the euro let's just zoom in a bit it's a bit messy because you've got these fibonacci lines um, which is a fibonacci retracement of this big bear run that we saw that's the sort of the six week downtrend a fibonacci retracement of that downtrend currently 23.6 percent is sort of becoming is is the resistance really around 14.50 uh, and it's just backed away once again off that and the fact is here we go this is what i was sort of focusing on uh, earlier with the euro oh that's the wrong one is that just to re-emphasize the fact that once you've broken this big downtrend this six-week downtrend it becomes the basis of support it's happened actually on a couple of days and it could still become that and that support currently comes in at 12 figure so i mean it is a sharp downtrend but still uh, it could well happen right so if i do year on an hourly chart sorry i've got cable there you're on hourly chart here we go this is that support that i was telling you about now this is sort of zoomed out a bit and at 113 still holding on actually that was that 1295 level uh was an, a neckline of a small base pattern that we had and uh just these lows here just never really fell below that neckline not decisively and that 1260 mark here which is the low that we've got on the 29th of jan remains intact um so you could arguably but i suppose drop that that support uh which is a little bit probably a little bit more useful there around that 1260 mark which in comp uh, which holds up to yesterday's low and today's low but still you would argue within that you're sort of trading within a range still you're not really breaking down yet and this um that big sharp dollar down that um move to the downside which is that non-farm payrolls rated dollar strength still not really um dragged euro dollar back into a bearish outlook all these moving averages are basically sideways rsi finding support above 30 which again in the last couple of days is indicative of a bit of a range plate really rather than a, a sharp uh, downside move and i don't think yet these these dollar bulls have got quite got the uh, the reins yet um so uh, that's a uh, I think a concern uh, annoyingly my chart has just frozen but anyway um i think i mean the, the last couple of hours we've actually had a bit of news that's come out that suggested that the uh, eu is going to be um sort of extending the terms of the great bailout so maybe that is um well that's certainly why the euro has bounced anyway um but uh, again that's just holding on to that 113 um or sort of between 126 uh sorry to, 112.60 and uh, 113 as the basis of support. Okay, so it's cable. Here's that downtrend, that big six, uh, six, seven month downtrend. You're still trading around it. And again, if you look on the hourly chart, you're holding on to that 113 sorry 152 figure key support and that is because it was numerous times throughout this uh, this trading period through through late january 152 figure was used as the basis of resistance and it's now become the basis of support again i emphasize old support becomes new resistance and old resistance becomes new support and in this case obviously it's a break higher so new resistance sorry old resistance becomes new support so that 52 figure level is the new support and the fact that i've got these two horizontal lines here between 52 figure and 5270 i see that as sort of like a neckline of this big base pattern here if 52 figure starts to break down then I think that that neckline is breaking down and then that the support starts to, sorry the um the uh base pattern starts to lose some configuration but for now it's not breaking down and I'm also mindful of the fact that if this support continues to hold in the next couple of days I would be um waiting for 
the, uh, the the Bank of England quarterly inflation report, which I think is probably going to show a bit of a hawkish shift. And if that's the case, if we continue to hold on to 52 figure, I think that that base pattern could have something considerable to the upside. We could have a bit of a technical rally on the cable chart going on. But at the moment, we are holding on to that 52 support. And that, I think, is important. Right. OK, a couple of... Uh... Okay, what percentage are you fundamental and technical trader? I, I look. Uh, okay, um, how I view the markets. Sorry, quick drink there. Um, I believe that you have to use fundamentals and technicals in conjunction. I don't think that they are mutually exclusive. I think that fundamentals drive the big macro trend of the technicals and then you use the technicals as your short-term trading skills um to try and get your direction but certainly the fundamentals have a massive impact on the charts uh, at a macro level and also on a news flow basis um at a very short-term level so you need to be you t need to make sure that you are sort of clued up to a certain extent on both you can't just put your head in the sand and just be a technicals trader because if you don't know the, what the big macro picture is doing, then you could be in a, a little bit of trouble. But in terms of my trading, in terms of my short term trading, I have to admit I'm more of a technical trader because purely um, because I was uh, brought up on technicals. Um, and uh, that is where my skill set mainly lies. But I'm still very mindful of the big macro uh, fundamental picture that uh, has a part to play as well. OK, so if cable picks up above 52.75 and reaches 53.40, how much higher could it go before it downtrend resumes? That is a good question because this big base pattern um, certainly, I think, uh, gives you a doubt, gives you a target of back into this sort of trading range here. Um, let me just see that again even more. Sort of gives you, I mean, if you even go on a conservative basis, 50 about 50 figure up to 52.70 that's 240 250 pips if you add that on that gives you around about 55 figure which is interestingly the bottom of all this congestion here pretty much between 50 figure and 50.40 interestingly takes you to the bottom of all this resistance uh, and there's not really if if that if that does go if that if we can get back above that high that we saw the other day. Let me zoom in there. If we get back above the reaction high, which is 53.50, there's nothing really that's going to stop you going back towards that uh, 55 area, I think, on this chart. So it could be a, a fairly interesting rally. Uh, now, in terms of where that downtrend comes in, that if that would be confirming the um, just a, a breakdown of that downtrend, but still you wouldn't really have broken above a key reaction high yet. So you're still not in a bull phase. You're certainly not in a bull phase. You're just not in such a bear phase, I think, if that downtrend gets broken. Just because a downtrend gets broken, it doesn't mean that you're going to get you're going to go on a massive bull run. It just means that perhaps you're in some sort of big um, sort of sideways consolidation phase. And I think that that would be the case on cable. I think that um, the big um, the big outlook on cable suggests to me that uh, we're going to be getting more volatility, sideways trading, um, and uh, I think that that's how cable is going to go. Right. Okay. So let's look at dollar yen. Oh no, that's not how you do it. That's annoying. Okay, dolly yen breaking out. As I said, you've got that uh, that intraday breakout, that uh, lovely bull flag pattern, which uh, now suggests I think we're going to be coming back towards sort of breakout. Um, let me zoom in slightly. Coming up towards these highs here, which is around uh, one twenty one figure. Sorry, not one twenty figure. Uh, so it looks like that is the next next real resistance, but I think 12180 is these uh, are these reaction highs here that I think you could easily see a test of now. And, and the momentum indicators are certainly beginning to really improve now on this case, on this uh, dolly and chart. So it's looking okay.
What is your view on sterling yen? Oh, interesting. Okay, let's do that. JPY. JP, let's do that and do that. Okay, sterling yen. Look at this. Fibonacci. Lovely. How good is that? Okay, so you've had a correction. Fibonacci move. That that thirty eight point two percent was a lovely bit of support, but look at the support we got around sixty one point eight three times, and we've now broken higher. You've also, interestingly, on this chart, you've broken out above this range, and you're sort of now finding support on the breakout of that range. What does that mean? Well, you sort of measure the distance of that range. So I'm going to say seventy five, seventy five up to eighty twenty five. Is that seventy five? Yeah. So eighty twenty five. So that's 450 pips up from 8025 is 8570 so 8475 as a as a target interestingly because that would be 23.6% fibonacci which has been uh, a bit of a, a basis of support certainly was there so that could now become basis of resistance and the fact that we are now breaking above 38.2 if you sort of have a decent close above there that could easily again open the way towards that 23.6% fib level so the momentum indicators still rebounding macd line starting uh, to confirm that crossover not above neutral yet so you're not so that would suggest you're still sort of in a bit of a, an unwinding phase really um, but still it looks like uh, this sterling yen chart is getting pretty much more positive Okie dokie. Well, uh, I'm being told to wrap up. So, okay, well, let me just. Um, okay, so we've done that. Okay, so that's um, that's trading with trend lines today. Uh, if you want to look at my research, um, you can go to my website, which is handtechfx.com forward slash market dash research, and um, you got daily report there every day. Uh, also analysis videos and weekly strategy stuff as well. I tweet all my stuff through at Hantech Rich. If you're interested, um, I uh, tweet throughout the day uh, on anything that's going on. So uh, hopefully um good bit of insight there as well and any sort of breakouts um, that you've got. And um, if you've got any questions, um, obviously, we talked about a lot of things today, uh, a lot of trend lines, but a lot of other stuff as well. And if you've got any questions, please, please, please just email me, uh, marketing at handtechfx.com, and uh, we can uh, we can just discuss some stuff there. So uh, please feel free to do that. I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Right. So uh, very quickly about Handtech Markets. Um, I'm allowed to do this, which is nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, we are a UK regulated broker based in London. Um, we've got 100 percent straight through processing execution. There is no dealing desk. So um, we are there's no um, there's no we don't push uh, anything on you um, in terms of any t in terms of recommendations or anything. Um, and we, we don't take the other side of the deal. So therefore, it's pretty much as fair as you can get in that regards. Uh, we've got competitive spreads and we use the MT4 and Currenx trading platforms. And as I said, through our website, you get free daily and weekly uh, research, um, which um, I get good feedback on, uh, not meaning to blow my own trumpet. So uh, that's nice. Anyway, uh, I wish you good luck in all of your trading. Um, there's my disclaimer again, because we've been talking about live market information. So please, please, please give it a read. Um, and uh, thank you very much for listening. And I'll speak to you again next time. Thank you.